welcome back to my channel this is Rashid here and uh, today's video is going to be another topic within the physical design series and if this is the first time you're watching my videos or the first time you came to my channel then just I want to introduce myself that this is Rashid I have 23 years of IC design experience including 19 years at Intel as physical design engineer and then finally manager so today's video is going to be about a higher level overview of synthesis the gate level synthesis which is the first step in the physical design implementation stage and also i will talk about what are the inputs what are the outputs of the flow i will not talk detail about the inside the flow but will give you inputs and outputs and also talk about what are the tools in the industry um, that we are using for gate level synthesis okay so anyway this is picture oh, sorry I'm showing a lot but what I want to higher level show you is when you give an RTL to us to the synthesis tool it creates a netlist okay, that's the whole point I'm trying to create here so in this example I have taken a simple uh, full ladder one bit A, one bit B, uh, carry in comes input and output is one bit S and carry out. Okay. Then in the RTL, I explain it with the system very log. We went over this system very log code in a recent uh, system very log challenge as well, but this is system very log. You have all the inputs defined. You have inputs A, B, and C in, and then output is S and C out. And this is a higher level a system very log code uh, for uh, an adder so when we give this to the synthesis flow or to the synthesis tool and we have to give that in the form of different uh, tickle commands we will see that in in a couple of videos later on and we'll talk about uh, tickle as well so when you give that the output is a netlist so I'm assuming the full adder, if you have watched my videos on combinational circuits, then this was the full adder that we came up with. This is the, the gate diagram of the full adder. After we created the truth table, then we created this one. So manually we have to create a truth table, then you manually have to create this one. But tool is going to generate, create this for us. So we don't have to go through those lengthy um, Boolean equations and then optimization the synthesis tool is going to convert into gate level but not only convert but it will also do an optimization time in area and power and we will look into those constraints as well so if you look at the, the structure of the netlist so this is a very log format so okay you have a module same way then you have inputs and outputs and then any temporary wires here w1 w2 and W3 those are declared as as wires okay and then you have an instances simple instances higher level. so this is not a higher level code this is now we are talking in terms of standard cells okay so this one for example is the reference cell of the standard cell library and this is an R gate sorry the exclusive R gate and this is actually the name of the cells and we are using that cell instantiating in our design so you can use one design so many times as many time as you want and tool is uh, later on the the tools different in the physical design implementation and verification they know that okay whenever you have this command actually what you mean is they look into standard cell library and pick that cell we will look into standard cell library as well as a separate video and look into how different standard cells are defined their format and what kind of delay and uh, functionality and transition time type of information is mentioned there but right now just think that okay we got a necklace so basically we have one this gate is instantiated here so you can see that I'm not going getting into syntax of very log or system very log here but all is showing okay there is a input B input and the temporary net that is connected to the three inputs then this goes to the output A, so you can see that W1 here. Then C in is coming, which is this, and then you have a sum. And that is another exclusive R. 
Now, this time you have seen that instead of taking this one, it has taken in a different because name is different. Okay, how these names are different in this particular example, I will explain to you. But think of there is still an exclusive R, but have some different attributes. This faster, a so lower, it has more area, lower area, more power, less power. So these are all variants of the same type of cell exist in standard cell library, and two can really choose between them. Okay, then you can think of this AND gate is here, this AND gate is here, and this OR gate is here, and N module. So this uh, is just a text file, okay? A text file with this thing, then down the stream when the tools read this, floor plan tool, for example, reading this, it knows, okay, how this circuit is made. So it's like a text representation of this circuit. Understood? So one thing as i already mentioned synthesis do not only do the conversion into netlist but they also take care of the optimization for example if you remember from my other circuit you can also have this type of gate implementation of the same full full adder for sum and carry out and here you have three end gates and not gate but what if tool is trying to reduce the area so you can see one two three four five six and in this implementation you have five so maybe to when it converts into this, it thinks it's a better for um, area um, and, and maybe better for power. Uh, and uh, so it uses that one. And then it thinks, okay, um, maybe this one has, so if you look at this one, the critical path, uh, if you, the longest path. So if you look at from this side, this goes one cell, two cells. This one from here, one, two cells, sorry. Here is one cell, but you need definitely this one. So this seems to be the longest path. A, B has to be done this for because this AND gate output has to come here. So it depends on this. And this OR gate output depends on this one. So, have. so this seems to be a longest path. So maybe tool compromised, tool compromised on area. It got a fewer cells, but you know, get a bit hit on timing. But once it's got that, now it has to improve timing. So what it did is, so here is the concept of different drive strength. So if you look at this for a second, so what happens is, if you remember this two-dimensional gate, which I try to draw in uh, in a three-dimensional, um, but still it's not a fin fat. It's an R O transistor. So if N plus N plus, this is B. And this is actually the length of the transistor, but this side is width. So if you keep the length one, you can make it wider and wider. That means a bigger, bigger transistor with the same length. And you know that when width goes up, current goes up. So this is a pretty uh, simpler way of increasing, making a transistor faster and draw more current or produce more current is by increasing the width of it okay but when you increase the width of it okay if you look at it gets bigger of course it will take more area then also there is another impact you will see that okay increasing the width it means this capacitance is because area is bigger capacitance more which is kind of um, against the increase in delay but it always depends on which one is, is a bigger factor but another important contribution is power so if capacitance goes up, your power goes up because power is proportional to the capacitance as well as the supply water square. So you see that, okay, um, in the standard cell library, an easier way to drive more current or make a transistor uh, faster is, or a gate faster is use a version of the same and same gate but with its transistors using a bigger width. So in this one example, what I this is my own naming convention. You any foundry can come up with some naming convention. I just gave them my own name, like a Rashid Foundry or something. Created the standard cell library. So call them exclusive or this is two means to input, and this X means drive strength. X4 I'm assuming is bigger than X2, right? So similarly here there are two AND gates. X4 is a bigger than X1 version of it, it is width is higher. So if you look at this one, since this is critical part, tool really wants to optimize 
it, it wants to put this one big. I mean, it doesn't want to put this one big. It's, it, this is the critical part. So as long as this and this with lowest uh, drive strength is good enough, there's no point in increasing them because you don't want to get the penalty on the area. So with the critical part you can have for this one, I1, you can pick a higher drive strength. Then this I end, this is a second instead of end. And this is, you see, X4. I pick, basically, I pick this one. But so the critical path I want to make with transistor or gauge with higher drive strength. And other are with one or two. Okay, so this is totally mine. But whole point is every sensor library comes up with some naming convention, how they pick the names. And it corresponds to what kind of cell it is, how many inputs are, and what kind of drive strength. There can be other variation that that foundry is providing. So synthesis to not only converting it to equivalent netlist of standard cells, but it also wants to create more optimized version of it. So if you look at synthesis flow, you already seen that, okay, there is an input RTL. RTL register transfer logic can be in system array log, can be very log, can be VHDL. So all those files come into synthesis. Then standard cell library comes into this as input. Now, as I mentioned in a couple of videos ago that you can have already finished designs, you can have memories and all those other designs which are IPs, which you are bringing them, you're not synthesizing them. There's already a fully finished physical design version of those available. So you, you know, input those as a library, as a finished library. So that's the input. Now constraints, that's a very important one. How tool is going to decide it needs to do timing optimization, it needs to increase the driving strength or it needs to ensure that instead of 3N gate, it picks some nice combination with less gates. So it needs to know what kind of timing constraints are in design. This design work on one gigahertz, 500 megahertz, and how many critical parts are there. Uh, all those type of things it needs to know. Area needs to know, okay, how big is the X, and let's say this is our die, is how big is the X, and and why right so it, it needs to know all that dimension where the pins are located um, and other constraints out of area or floor plan so area or floor plan some of them similarly it needs to know okay how much power this need to consume do i need to use clock gating and uh, does it um, need to use a special library um, multiple threshold voltage type of libraries what kind of power domains are those there are what kind of different voltages are for different type of regions. So all those constraints come for you. So in, 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 in the presence of th these type of constraints, which are given in a specialized format, which is a tickle format, synthesis flow, synthesis tool decides how much or what sort of optimization you need to do. Then all the inside steps are, are once ran, and we will look into those later on in the next video. Then it produces a net list or an output database which is uh, needed down down the stream in the physical implementation cycle so it generates those and once it's generated that at the same time uh, it dumps the flow dumps all kind of reports so there are a lot of commands that you can um, use to understand how is the timing of the design how is the area of the design how is the power design if you need to debug something there are a lot of commands Typically, a flow can dump out by default. I mean, there are lots of commands there, but somebody, when we say somebody need to create the flow, let's say there are uh, 100 commands, different commands for reporting something. But in your project, you decide that you don't need all of them. You need certain tens kind of report that you want every designer, when they're census finished, they look into those and decide the quality of results. Then it's the flow that you're controlling and you're only putting those 10 reports generation. So you can generate, that is your flow now. So tool has so many things, but you don't want to use everything, right? You know what you need for your design. You got that? So yes, so reporting is done, and then analysis is done. And in case we need to change few things, we need to optimize few, we need to update some of the constraints, then those parts, are, those things are done. But then those, that is the incremental part of it. It's not that you push the button, your output is there, and you move on. It rarely happens like that. You get something, you feel like something is not optimized, 
tool needs more support from you you go back tweak few things and look at that and this a lot of iteration go that and that can be painstaking because your designs are not simple for ladders the you design and all these stages take time at the same time when tool runs it in my experience reading the rtl reading constraints reading some of the inputs you gave might not be in in a, in a, in a valid format maybe didn't understand something maybe it found some problem during a hardware design that there's a construct that it cannot synthesize or if something is missing it's going to put everything a warning critical warning on the error there usually an error it doesn't go to the next stage but sometimes can be warnings can be critical super important but it just it generally decides okay you need to keep keep moving on to the next step within the synthesis flow so in re in reviewing your logs uh, your errors warnings is equally important uh, for a designer so as a, a synthesis person okay yes rtl is your input and you don't need to know every uh, little bit little thing inside the rtl or your design but you need to know your rtl you need to know your design work and up details what is the critical path and all that or you can analyze this later on to understand this design more but you definitely need to know what kind of constraints are getting in and um, yeah as typically said garbage in garbage out if you're you have a crappy constraints doesn't make sense or overly constrained design uh, then you're not going to get a good output okay so it's important to put right kind of con correct constraints it's also important to put right library right link library uh, because those inputs are going to determine the quality of the flow and quality of the netlist understand that the tools that we use in the industry um synopsis and cadence are one of the top ones i use in all my career synopsis tools design compiler have been there for a long time now fusion compilers comes in and it it feels like okay a lot of gitlab netlist is part of that synopsis pushing for more like a one tool kind of from start to end so all those commands are still there but maybe slightly change in a new way but now people call it okay fusion compiler can do your synthesis your placement brow flow plan and everything is is one place that has can have a lot of advantages there so i might give you some examples still in design compiler could be a lot of people design compiler cadence there is the second one in the uh, physical design uh, is popular is cadence tools genus genus um yeah i saw the mental graphics or siemens they have a tool and this is the open source so i might use this one later on to show you more uh, what's happening what kind of reports and all that because these are expensive one i don't have access to these right now but since i use this tool a lot so even without using them at least i can show you some of the commands some of the sample one at least just for you to see what's happening there all right so that's all for this video hope you understood this and in the next one we will get further within this area okay what are the different stages and i'll show you some of the sample commands so till then um, take care. Bye.